So a couple days ago, I had the wild hair to modify my Ortley painter, design something in CAD and 3D print it. Only problem was I'd never used CAD software before and I don't own a 3D printer. Find out why and how I was able to pull it off in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you love the non-competitive side of cycling, exploring by gravel, bike commuting and 3D printing apparently, the supple life, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. So during our recent California tour, there are a couple stretches of road where I wish that the Ortley painters that I typically use had a bungee connection. Really quickly, this is the standard hardware. It's got uh, adjustable hooks on the top and these sliding hooks on the bottom. And about 95% of the time they do awesome, but there are a handful of instances when a bungee system I think is better. Primarily when the train is super rocky. If you're using a front rack like the Tubus Terra rack, where it's kind of like an S shape and it doesn't box in the bag. And more specifically, when you're using the Terra rack on a modern bike with disc brakes. There's just a lot going on near that hub area. There's uh, the fork itself, the disc brake caliper, the tubing of the rack. It turns into a real challenge uh, to slip in that lower hook. And that's kind of the perfect storm that happened on our California trip, which got me thinking if only I could convert the Ortlieb into a bungee system. Interestingly, Ortlieb does have an accessory uh, for their, it says anchoring strap for Vario. So they do have a bag where there is a bungee conversion. So that solved about half the problem, getting the elastic piece, the hook, and attachment to the top part of the Ortley bag. However, if you were just to use that, uh, the, the bottom of the bag wouldn't be supported very well. It'd still be swinging back and forth or running into the rack. So I did have to fabricate uh, some kind of anchoring point for the elastic band to fit through. And that led me to the rabbit hole of 3D printing. First, I had to pick the software. There's a bunch of options out there, lots of free trial versions. Uh, I ended up going with Fusion 360. The interface did take some time uh, to get used to, but if you've used uh, software like Adobe Illustrator, it's kind of like that but in three dimensions. You basically draw flat shapes and you extrude them, then you can cut holes, combine, uh, you know, cut out where they intersect, all that stuff. After about three or four hours of uh, YouTube tutorials, I felt like I, I knew just enough to be dangerous and to start the process. So I knew what I wanted to create was a non-destructive system, something I could easily remove and put the OEM parts back on in case it didn't work out. So instead of something completely new and different, I was just gonna modify kind of the pieces they already had. Uh, so instead of a hook, I wanted to create something with a slot that would anchor the elastic strap. And even though they were super simple shapes, because it was my first time getting used to the software, it took way longer to pull off. Probably one of the, the trickier bits for me was I knew I wanted some kind of knurling on the knob so it wasn't a, a smooth cylinder. So I had to define a space, draw a cutout, and then create a circular pattern. So I knew how to do it conceptually, but, but I had to learn how the program wanted me to input things. Simple thing, that knurling took like hours. It was pretty ridiculous. When I was designing the parts, um, you know, I didn't have the original files for these. So I was literally uh, just measuring kind of the dimensions with a digital caliper and then inputting them into my own modifi modified versions. For example, I would measure uh, the diameter of this piece and then measure the uh, diameter of the small bolt hole and then measure the thickness, the overall thickness of the piece and try to replicate that in my own design. When I had the design done, uh, I did some research on how, how I could get it printed. And amazingly, Missoula actually has a fair amount of uh, 3D printers that's accessible to the public. And our public library has a whole maker space. So learning that, I hopped on the bike and pedaled to the library and checked out the maker space. I had a great chat with Ira who kind of, you know, talked me through the machines, kind of uh, really quickly talked about the software. I gave them the files and then it started printing. So I've heard of 3D printing, but I've never seen it happen in person. And it was actually pretty magical. Uh, it was kind of like the movie, The West World, but in miniature and not as killy. One thing I wasn't expecting was actually how long it took uh, to print the parts. These are the what my initial design uh, version one. These printed parts took about an hour. So it is fast in terms of like the whole prototyping cycle, but the actual output is actually kind of slower than you would think, or than at least than I thought. And when I finally got handed the parts, it was so cool to see in person something I designed on the computer and kind of have it just appear before my very eyes. Uh, some things came out pretty well. The knurling 
uh, on the knob came out great. On the actual anchor piece, I put in these little uh, spherical gripping teeth similar to what's on the original Ortlieb hardware. And uh, I had to kind of eyeball uh, the measurements and it, it mated perfectly. So when I got home, I took the, the uh, elastic bungee system and attach it to the Ortley, which is pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna do a full-on tut tutorial, but you remove the bolt, slip the piece in, and put the bolt back in. And that gave us the bungee part of this bungee system. After that, I replaced the plastic bits that uh, I was redesigning, and it actually fit. Uh, some things were a little bit rough, and what I found with the version one, the path of the elastic was not ideal because it was having to go across and into and then come back out and it was causing all this binding and this friction. So seeing that, I immediately just tweaked the, the design. I changed the orientation of the slot so it was more of a pass-through and that the anchor system was just acting as a guide rather than physically pinning it down to the bottom of the bag. And it works awesome. So here is the part and uh, as you can see, now there's a place to prevent the, the bungee from just kind of moving left or right. Uh, it passed through pretty easily. I think the only other modification I would change would be the nut to get a, a domed nut, just so there's less friction um, with the elastic band. Uh, you know, I've tried it on the bike, I've tried it on a couple bikes, and it works awesome. Another modification I would probably try is to actually bring this slot up uh, closer. Uh, seeing how it works in person, there's actually no need for this to be so long. It could be a short there and still be effective. So this is just kind of extra material that I can take off. So the material that the uh, 3D printer at the library uses is PLA, so it's a plastic material. Uh, it's good for prototyping, but it's not the most durable. So this probably wouldn't last too long in the field, but it's a cool proof of concept. So what did I learn in the process? Uh, number one, we live in amazing times. We live in an era where you can have an idea, put it in CAD, and then print it the same day, and you're holding it in your hands. That is amazing. Second thing I learned or gained was actually an appreciation for just designed objects. I mean, looking at the uh, standard uh, Ortlieb stuff, you know, there's all these kind of facets and, and places where they took out material and added material to bolster it up. Things where I would have like no idea how to uh, CAD up a newfound appreciation in basically everything, like every kind of contour, it's like, whoa, someone had to uh, intentionally prog program that. The third thing I learned, I guess, is that uh, if there are things that you wish existed, there are the means to make them happen. And I have, a lot more ideas. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, should this be a recurring series? I've got all sorts of mounts and other things on the bike and off the bike I wish existed. And now that I have a basic understanding of the process, I think it would be cool to make some of these things come to life. Let me know if you guys want to see a you know 3D printing make it series on different bike touring hacks. And if you guys like content like this, consider supporting the channel via PayPal and Patreon. It really makes all this stuff possible. And as always, keep the supple side down.